Did you know about the velvet worm? Well, today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the velvet worm. The velvet worm is basically about 5 million-ish years old, the family is anyways, of the velvet worm. And the velvet worm has been existing for a long time. And the velvet worm is one of the more unique types of insects. It was one of the first ones to ever crawl upon land. It is completely terrestrial, which means it stays on the ground at all times. On every single one of its legs, it has a set of fangs. And up at the front, it has a thing of spares that spray acidic webbing. And also, velvet worms have the ability to pretty much live anywhere because of, once again, their acidic webbing. Their acidic webbing is basically also can be used as an antifreeze because it's acidic and toxic and could create heat. And then... The way that they use it is basically their sick webbing. Hey, when they go up to their prey, they basically go up to the prey and spray it on them. But as they're doing it, they're like waving it so it makes like a net. And since it hardens really quickly, the prey can't escape and they're also being burned a little. And that has a little tooth that will then use to inject its digestive acids and then drink you like a drink, like old bugs. Oaken bugs do that. <laughs> and then the velvet worm also is able to retract its body like a normal worm, but it's not a worm, it is its own species. It looks like it'd be a mix between a worm, a centipede, and a caterpillar. And it also was something about them is that if they were big enough, they could eat humans. But typically, they only get to like about six inches to a foot. So. Rarely would that happen, but if they did get big enough for that to happen, let's just say you would want to get around it because of its webbing, because it's just a little acidic for the little guys. What about if it's big? Then you're going to get a real bird. That's one of the main concerns about velvet worms. People think they're going to get a bird, but they're very not aggressive towards humans because they're small. And also the reason why they're called velvet worms is because they feel like velvet. And not because they're a color velvet, because their top side is purple, and then their underside is yellow with purple. And really not that velvet. <laughs> it's just purple. <laughs> and another thing about them is that they typically go after bugs around their area and could survive in Antarctica. So, if you're ever going to Antarctica, don't bring a velvet worm with you. It will create an invasive species, and we already have enough of those. Oh yeah, they can be extremely invasive too. But they're not invasive right now, because no one is deciding to take them anywhere. And also, they are not able to go in water because they are terrestrial. And they usually come out in rainy nights, which is usually when people don't go out looking for them. And that's why they're super rare to find. And they come... There are a couple different colors. They could be red, blue, and purple. That's the only colors I know. And also white. I believe they could also be white. That's a maybe. Maybe. And then also they are extremely, extremely passive towards humans, but not to other bugs. And if a spider were to try and fight a velvet worm, because this has actually been already filmed by a Bug Wars video, and basically, let's just say that the spider did not have the best life. And at the end of the video, the spider went bye-bye. Because -bye. the, uh, what's it called again? Oh, yeah, the velvet worm had gone, you ain't living today. And killed the whole entire thing. Uh, that will be it. So, did you I'll know?